right, so we're here to work on a freezer. It says it's not working well. So unless that thermometer there is off, it looks like it's working fine. So we got in a, got over here and we just got here. So let's go and take a look. Everything feels frozen to me, so I'm not sure what they're having problems with. The coil's not frozen. So we're coming around the backside here, taking a look at it. I just talked to the owner. He said this morning about nine o'clock area, he said it was really warm. The guys that was taking care of things last night before they closed said things were a little bit warm. Next thing you know, it's obviously down to negative 10. Looks like heat tape's working good. The back coil's clean. Everything's working fine there. I know you guys don't like our PVC idea there, but it works pretty good and we're, nobody says anything about it. I'm gonna get up there and take a look, see what we got going on. If it's uh, maybe it was in a defrost, maybe we we're low on charge, maybe you know, maybe the, the ducks got in there and screwed things up, antelopes, zebras, who knows? Check superheat too, just in case. Answer coil looks to be clean. Everything looks fine on that. Let's take a look inside here. We've got an old-fashioned clock on here, which is reliable. 45-minute defrost, which is more than enough. Two times per 24. They don't get into this like crazy amounts of times, I don't believe. So we're right now at 11.46. So uh, to figure out where we were at, say he was here at 9. It had been 10, 11. It had been two hours and a half ago. Uh, but here it is at 8 o'clock. It would have done it, and currently it thinks it's 2.30. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, seven and a half hours ago that it did whatever it did. I haven't touched anything on the clock yet. Go ahead and mark it just to make sure that it's moving. And then we'll uh, put it into defrost and see if it can get into it and get out of it. So let's give this a second. Everything else looks good enough for government work. Well, we waited just a little bit, had a phone call and it did did rotate, so let's go ahead and get this thing up against. I mean, 45 minutes is really long. Generally, 30 is plenty, 32. It should have a termination in there, and it looks like it's hooked up. All that's pretty tight. Less compressors maybe not starting. We do have a time delay here. I've had those fail in the past. So that's always a possibility. Could have a thermostat acting up. Just want to defrost. Shorten this up a little bit. Maybe take it to 32. See if it pumps down. Pump down. You know, some other things I've seen happen in the past too is the pressure switch on super cold weather will be screwy. And, uh, Sometimes it's not set low enough, so it will trigger and come on. Usually you can do about 20, 23 on 404, I think, PSI. Okay, let's go back in here. Got the thermal imager. Get the reflection off the back there. Okay, it's pretty obvious that it's working bottom one might be underneath the coil which is why it's probably not showing up very good it looks like to me that's more than adequate let's see how our heat tape looks make sure it's working which it sure appears that it is because let's look at it from this angle yep there's the heat tape you can see that it's working okay good there's a little frost. There's a little frost in there. Not horribly bad. Let's watch this for a minute. See if it kicks out on its own. I got the stopwatch started. We'll see if uh, if it triggers out. But from what I'm seeing, I mean, we're definitely in the negative 19. If that's accurate. <laughs> negative 16. That's all based off reflection. I'm going off that bottom left corner there, what it's got, but anyhow, uh, the ice cream feels pretty, pretty hard. It's not like all squishy, but you know, let's watch this for a little bit, see what we get. Hopefully we'll come up with something because 
There's something going on. Let's take a look at this thermostat here. Seems pretty tight. It's right around that zero mark, so it's not off by much. Let's put it back down to that negative 10 area. He may have turned that just hoping that maybe that had something to do with it. You can see that we're dripping down and we're at just six minutes area, so it's defrosting pretty quick. It's not real super iced up. Like I said, the coil looks pretty good. That time it just kicked out officially and it did it right at 13 minutes. So we'll be fine every bit of maybe 30. This is a fail safe. Let's kick it back on. Sight glass is solid, no, no flashing at all there. Caps are on. Fan cycle seems like it's working because the fan's off right now. I'm not seeing a whole lot wrong other than possibly a thermostat issue because defrost is working, defrost clock's working, defrost heaters, refrigerant charge seems to be fine. The only thing that would have stopped it would be possibly the thermostat. Now, we could check some of the wiring inside of the, uh, the case there and see if there's any issues with that. Maybe there's some loose wires in there, but he did say that it was running. Now, granted, that was interesting. So, did it satisfy the thermostat already? Hmm, seems a little odd. Definitely ain't the defrost clock here. Set that back to the correct time. Okay, well, the fans aren't running, so that was a little odd. That something wild's going on. Okay, fans ain't running. This is where we're gonna get the meter out and we're gonna find out what's going on. Because unless it's in a defrost, those fans should be running. So let's see if we got power on number four. Let's make sure we still have power coming into it. We do have 248. Obviously nothing coming out the back side. Gently. Try to open that. Let's go to N4. I have 247 volts on N and 4. Check it to 3. Nothing on 3. We do have it on 4. So something is keeping our fans from coming on. So our fans are going to be either this black wire or that black wire. One black wire goes to the most likely the solenoid uh, that was a little odd what I should have done was check through my time delay there that time delay might be acting up we do not have an open circuit however we do have two volts across it which is a little odd Great if we could get right into the pressure switch there, but gotta take 15 screws off the Danfoss there to get to it. Let's go back in and see if those fans are not running. See, either way, those fans should still have stayed running. So even if that delay deal there was triggering out the compressor, which is all it should protect, the fan should have kept running. And the fans are not running. Um, we could be dealing with a potential fan delay, time delay. Uh, could be dealing with a termination fan delay switch. Maybe it's not cold enough for the fans to come on yet, even though it, you know, obviously terminated on uh, on temperature, which, like we said, it did in like 13 minutes. Let's see if we can get into this pressure switch here and check see what we got I was able to get in there and check the low pressure switch it is not open was not open and I still had power on four the unit just kicked back on we do have an interlock here that's just on the side of the contactor there 
Yeah, that sounds like a pump down. That's what that sounds like. Let's go back in here and check this little pressure switch again. Because if it's pumping down because the solenoid's not getting it or whatever, this is a shit location for this clock. I should have mounted it over here, moved this over so you could actually get in here to do some work. That pressure switch is still not open. Something's shutting it down. Let's jump this out. Go down to here. That just eliminates the time delay. We just went around it. Which it was already on and it didn't do anything. We can watch it again now to see if it's a time delay. We're just going to eliminate it. Pretty sure they did their usual solenoid right out here on the back side of it. <sighs> yep, right there it is. Well, I can feel... I can feel the magnetism on the coil. I can feel it vibrating. And I've showed you this little trick before I learned off somebody else on YouTube. Just using your amp clamp, it picks up magnetic field. And it was at 14 amps, which is an arbitrary number. So our solenoid is open. The pressure switch is not shutting it down, which I find to be peculiar. For whatever reason, I have no idea. It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But Bones switched their valves around so that you have to get to them from in here now. So now you gotta deal with this, which luckily we didn't put the screws in it, so that makes it a little easier. But even when you get in here, you still got this freaking panel in the way and you can't get your hands worth of crap in there. I'm not a big uh, proponent for turning on the gauges there on the unit, but remember when I said the fan cycle thing? Well, I wasn't thinking. This has a headmaster and they don't usually cycle their fans on these. There's what's going on. We're going off on high head pressure. And that must not be, must be another, yeah, there's gotta be another pressure switch in there somewhere, which we're gonna need to fix that right there too. That's touching on the top that's going to rub through so we need to fix that but we've got something going on with the fan whether it be bad fan motor capacitor whatever but that's what's going on that's why it's shutting this thing down it's going off on high head that's the reason why it was warm last night and this morning so our problem's not with our time delay so let's put our time delay back the way it was let's go ahead and kill power to this thing and pop this top well like you see there that came in handy. Got rid of that. It's pretty strong. It ain't going nowhere. I deburred it there. Sorry, but it needs to be serviceable. That was a dumb freaking idea. The only thing I can think is you're in the ghetto and people come trying to steal your refrigerant. Put the freaking locks on it. This sucks. Because you didn't even make it accessible to get your hands in there to work on it. I mean, with that, pin th with that piece there, you'd have to take, like, you can't even just take a little bit off. You got to take the whole panel off to get to it. All right, so we've got our high pressure switch here. We also have a thermal switch here for high discharge gas. When I spun the motor here, watch what it does. See that right there, that left right stuff? That's a magnetic field. That's a DC motor, even though it looks like a normal one. Chances are the electronics took a dump. These things don't hold up for nothing. We do have liquid injection. You can see it literally comes right off the liquid line right there, comes up comes into the valve body. Based off temperature, the valve opens up, dumps it right into the compressor here on the side of the shell. That's where the head is at. That's where all the heat is at. So it tries to cool it down there. That plug is starting to come out a little bit, probably from shipment and everything else. So we got that in there. I uh, rounded this up and got it so that it's not touching anything so we should be good there on that need to bend that away from that motor because i gotta pull that motor out of there as ted would call it i have a helicopter he's sitting there watching me so put the text in to see if we can find the motor if i can avoid putting that other motor in there i will i think i've done it before it's just one of them things where, what do you do? You gotta make it run. We only got so much time before it starts to warm up. Well, I followed the black wire and it ended up being a black and white wire that comes from the fan. And it comes right down here to the bottom of the contactor, right there, which we had 248 on that. 
uh, when I was pulling these wires out, you can see that there got smashed behind the clock. That uh, goes up to the low pressure switch and ties into the high pressure switch. I wasn't sure which one was which, so I had to cut that apart. Uh, that little bundle of stuff. The interlock they got there is nothing more than breaking power to the crankcase heater. So that's all that is, nothing fancy there at all. And short of that, that's about it. They got both high pressure switch and the uh, hot gas uh, sensor there and then low pressure switch all in series. Just breaking the contactor right there. Then you get your liquid solenoid being cut in between there. So you just intercept it and loopy doop. We're gonna see if we can make the 9656 work. We've got that trimmed up. Oh yeah. Thank you, Bone. You really thought that one out, didn't you? Now you, you should have known that we couldn't come up this side, so why wouldn't you flip it to this side so you could have taken it out? All you gotta do is figure out the jigsaw puzzle and you'll get it out. This uh, inner link, which I've, like I said, had a few of them die, is rated for 0.69 amps. I think this thing's like 0.4. That's all I got though. Mm, what do we got here? Fifth horse, 0.48. And at the other RPM, which is only a single speed motor, so I don't know why they even show that. I think they're going off of one voltage versus the other. You can do 0.66. Looks like it's gonna work. Yep, it's gonna have to work, bud. If we come back and use another, put another one of these pieces of trash in there, I doubt it. I really doubt it. They probably had, it, had to probably meet a quota or some crap for efficiency, and that's what you got. So anyhow, let's uh, get the Scooby-Doo mounted up in there and give it a bone. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing in there. This is the, I've said it before, the new Klein flip bit. And mention of flip bit and tools, I now have a promo code for True Tech Tools. If you use the promo code SURVIVAL, you'll get 8%. So if you want to throw a dog a bone, and you're going to buy your stuff there anyway, because they're already one of the best places to get things. And with those promo codes, you save more than you will usually buying it anywhere else, and you actually get a warranty, unlike a lot of the stuff you buy on, say, Amazon. The uh, promo code is the way to go. The only thing about this thing I don't like is it's not very deep, but it does give you the 3 8 and 11 30 seconds. So what I do is I just pull it out partially, and then automatically it pulls it up. So it works out that direction, but you just gotta pull it out. All right, just like I said, looks like that fits. May need to throw a washer on there because I do not believe those fancy ones they had will fit my motor. Yeah, they always got to be just a scoosh, a scoosh of post, a scoosh of toshis off, you know, just enough to stick it to you in the uh, anal cavity. So let's throw a washer on there, a washer. Let's put a washer on there or a washer, whichever and uh, see if we can get this thing back in there. It looks like it should probably, might possibly fit, kind of, maybe not. So let's see if we can get it in there. Worked out well. They're on there tight. Put the capacitor on bottom. Figure out rotation here in a minute. I never have been one to try to figure it out in advance because somebody does it from the lead in, some does it from the shaft in. Let's see if we can get this back in there. Then we'll put the fan blade on it. Thank you so much for all that extra room. And it's going to fit just like that. One of the other reasons why I like these key style here, you can kind of get in there and it further crevices and use the other keys as a handle. Now granted, they obviously aren't near as strong as if you're using the short end of it. That is something I like to use. So got that mounted just gotta get the power wires hooked up here so what I did is I chopped off the extra plug on the end it gives you that wider adapter plug and use that as my 
plug to splice onto the other wires they had there. It's not long enough to reach all the way in there, so might just reuse the ones you got. Uh, that way, if you need to change it later, or if we want to put this back on the truck, I can do it and still have my plug for later use if so. Uh, this thing should go clockwise, lead end. Whichever, whatever direction the, the fan blade digs into, that's that's the direction it is. So if you go this way and it digs into the dirt, for example, that's clockwise. And if it goes digging into the dirt this way, obviously counterclockwise. At least that's what the supply house told me. So anyhow, we got that there. Let's kick it in, see what happens here. There it goes, blowing this direction. That's good. Nice and quiet, let's check amp draw. We know that white wire and the black wire was it. So right there we are at 0.5. So we're at the lower of the two that they rated at. We're gonna be good enough. 0.46, so yeah, it's, it's borderline, but I've seen it work at that before and really don't have any other options other than get that one there that didn't even last. Uh, we gotta go ahead and do the PM on it, which is cleaning the coils and check contactors and all the things you do in a PM. All right, so that's gonna wrap that one up. Just as always, ask a lot of questions of your customer and get as much information as you can, figuring out what's going on, uh, because as you've seen, everything worked at first until we dug in. Uh, I noticed the fan wasn't running, but I just thought it was fan cycle. And I should have known, uh, generally, that phone always uses the, uh, the um, phone always seems to use the headmaster control. Uh, sometimes you'll add extras to it, but for the most part, it's mainly just headmaster control. So make sure you check us out on Instagram and Facebook. I post a lot of things on Instagram. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.